in the previous videos on magnetic effect of current that is part 1 and part 2 we have studied how Oersted discovered the magnetic effect of current and how do we get the direction of the magnetic field using Ampere's right hand grip rule. Then we have also studied Biosauer law which gives us the magnetic field due to a small current element and the application of the law to determine the field at the center of a circular coil carrying current. Continuing with the applications of Biosauer law, in this video we will be studying the magnetic field due to a current carrying coil at a point on the axis of the coil. For the purpose, let's consider a coil C carrying current I. Remember here this coil, there are three, this is to be looked as looked at as a 3D arrangement. This part of the coil, this half of the coil is behind the board, so drawn dotted. And this part is out of the board, this half is out of the board, so drawn shown as bold semicircle. P is a point on the axis of the coil at a distance x from the center. A denotes the radius of the coil. Using Biosauer law, we take a small element xy here of this coil. The length of the element is dl and obviously it's carrying a current which we have denoted by i. By Biosauer law, the magnetic field at P due to this small element xy is given by mu naught i dl cross r over 4 pi r cube. Now if you see this xy element, this xy element will be perpendicular to this r vector. So I mean this here the angle will be 90 degrees. In order to understand it you can imagine this xy to be a part of your finger pointing into the board and r divides the angle state angle of your finger into two equal parts. That's why you know the r vector will be perpendicular to this small element. That is theta will happen to be come out to be 90 degree which reduces the expression to mu naught i dl over 4 pi r square along pl. Oh, this direction also needs to be understood. We know db is is perpendicular to dr, perpendicular to dl and perpendicular to r. So this is by cross product rule. So here we have drawn pl perpendicular to this vector r. S similarly you know you can take another element x dash y dash which is identical to xy and diametrically opposite to it in the coil. The field due to x dash y dash will have same magnitude db but different direction perpendicular to its vector r dash. So this is db due to x dash y dash. This is db due to xy. We resolve these fields db due to the elements along the axis and perpendicular to the axis. The component of the field db due to xy that is along PL it will be db sin phi along the axis and db cos phi perpendicular to the axis. Similarly this field db will have its component db sin phi along axis and db cos phi normal to the axis. As is clear from the diagram, these components db cos phi cancel out being equal and opposite whereas these components db sin phi along the axis will have to be added up. In order to get field due to the entire coil, we have to integrate db sin phi components because 
DB cos phi components do not make any contribution. Uh, lead, leading you to magnetic field B as integral of DB sin phi. DB value you already have here mu naught i over 4 pi r square sin phi dl all these are constant factors phi is constant by symmetry it will be same for all such small elements which in which we divide this coil so you have to integrate dl only and integral of dl will be circumference of this coil that is 2 pi a here so you get this expression mu naught i over 4 pi r square sin phi is a by r from the diagram a the perpendicular a divided by r so this is sin phi this is the value of the integral which simplifies to mu naught i over 2r cube into a square r's you can see you can get from by pythagoras theorem as a square plus x square root so that gives you this as the final expression mu naught i a square over 2 a square plus x square 3 by 2 and it's along the axis of the coil ox now the direction is clearly along the axis this is by right hand rule applied to the cross product here these are some special cases at center x will be 0 because if P happens to be the center of the coil, x will be 0. So put x equal to 0, denominator will be a cube, so a square will cancel out with a cube, leading you to this expression mu naught i over 2a, which you have already derived. Similarly, if x is very large as compared to a, x very large as compared to a, we can rewrite this relation as mu naught i multiply and divide by pi pi a square over 2 pi x cube pi a square is area of the coil so mu naught i a over 2 pi x cube because in the denominator we neglect a this diagram the graph shows variation of magnetic field with distance from the center of the coil so field is maximum at the center and decreases as we move on either side of the coil. The circular coil behaves as a magnetic dipole with one of the faces acting as north pole and other as south pole. Now see remember recall that this part is behind the board and this is in front of the board. So if you stand on right hand side and curl the right hand along the current the thumb will point towards you that is towards right so this face acts as north pole here the current will be anti-clockwise in order to remember we write n as in a in this curving curved for or cursive n which also indicates the direction and helps you to remember that anti-clockwise current implies north pole and from left side the current is clockwise that is it acts as the south pole.